Good afternoon, traders. Okay, we're going to finish off the week with our uh, update on Bitcoin. I do these on Mondays and Fridays, with the exception of unusual price action during the course of the week, in which case I might put out a post, as I did this week, uh, for you all to read. Sometimes I'll put out a video, but I like to put out a... Uh, typed out post as well for those of you who don't really have the time to invest in these videos and I understand that I would rather read so I'm trying to um, do a good uh, weighted uh, system of post between uh, written or typed out post and videos uh, but I will continue these weekly updates on Monday and Friday in video format. All right, so let's jump to our charts and I will tell you what I think is in the cards here for good old Bitcoin. All right, last post, which I will link to in the description, I stated that uh, we did something I wasn't expecting in the last video, and that was that we dropped below this support zone. Now, if I had looked at this a little closer and studied it a little bit more, I could have anticipated this drop because this is actually a very healthy uh, drawback in Bitcoin. All right, so you can see here I've got, I know it's a noisy chart, so bear with me. I'll try to explain some of this stuff. I've got um, Fibonacci drawn from the wick low on March 13th. Uh, and actually March 14th, somewhere around there, uh, March 13th and 14th were pretty pretty much the same on the wick low. We hit this support at 37,550. So I drew Fibonacci from there to our wick high on March 28th, 29th, where we hit the 200 day, which is intersecting the ascending blue trend line. Mm -hmm. All right, that gives us different levels along the way. And we know um, from technical analysis that these drawbacks mm -hmm. like to come back to the 50% of Fibonacci area or in many cases 0.618. And that is a very healthy retracement. So actually, this is even better than I uh, projected or anticipated. Instead of us just going to that support zone, we came all the way back and retraced to the 50% Fibonacci, uh, for which I had a, already drawn a support level at 42,937, 38, somewhere around there. Uh, below that, we have the 0.618 Fib retracement level, which, interestingly enough, intersects with the 100-day and the 50-day moving average so that is super strong support right there um, now the bears are really trying hard to get us to drop below this last support here at 50 percent uh, 42,937 it remains unclear whether they're going to be able to do that or not um, that's uh, uh, that's a lot that's asking a lot of the bears uh, at this point this is how bullish i am and this retracement is really um uh, super healthy this makes me more bullish than I've ever been now I'm going to take away some of this uh, stuff here on the chart and and uh, uh, change a few things but we'll get to that in a little bit first let's dive into our dollar uh, the VIX as well as the indexes and we'll just trace through that real quickly and then we'll end on Bitcoin once again all right so the dollar here has done as expected this uh, right here is a bull flag and we broke to the upside of this descending channel of sorts all right right now we have one two three four five six seven green candles that is uh, anytime you get to seven to nine green candles you're you're starting to stretch your run all right and you can see that from this last candle here which is a sort of a doji uh trying trying to form a shooting star uh indicating that we are near the top of this run all right so uh, the dollar has broken to the upside of this bull flag 
and I think uh, we are receding from price action and probably what's going to happen here is we just turn around and just test the top side of this channel before we proceed further up. Yes, the dollar will continue to be strong from what I see, what the data is telling me. All right, but first we will probably come back down and test the top side of that channel. And that is our mm -hmm. chance for Bitcoin to make its move. All right, so when we start to see that happening in coincidence with the VIX dropping, which right now it's just above the 200 day. So if we can see the VIX drop below this 200 day and the dollar come down, that's when the markets will start to uh, take off even further. And of course that spills over into our crypto space. All right, silver and gold are kind of indicating the same thing. A Little bit of uncertainty here, right? And our fear index, actually, let me just pull that up here real quick is at 37 so we've got a bit of fear in the market and that's all um, this is the crypto fear index and that's all what we're seeing uh, in this price action all right so that uh, that aligns with what we're seeing on the VIX as well all right um, Dow is back above a level here a purple ascending trend line that I've got and what we're seeing here, if we zoom out, is a rounded top of sorts on the market. See how this 200 day, this is kind of what we're going to do is we're, we're kind of going to hug this 200 day. Sometimes we're going to be a little bit over, it, sometimes a little bit under it. But eventually this is going to be a rounded top and the markets, I expect, will start to recede towards the end of the year. And it, it's it's. Uh, uh, I'm not going to be a doomsdayer. I'm, I'm not going to tell you what I actually think is going to happen. But I don't think you have to be that smart to figure it out, guys. If you're, I don't even watch the news or the media or any of this. But if you just are on social media and you see what's happening, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what's going to happen to the U.S. economy. Um, SPY is kind of the same thing. Uh, you know, we're going to see this rounded top. That 200 day is going to be our lead indicator showing us how the market is going to go. Now, this is going to give us some time because we're, this is going to stretch all the way into June and July as we round the top on this market and begin our descent into Lord knows where we go at that point. Uh, NASDAQ. Uh, seeing a sharper decline of course uh, we we would see that as there are a bit more speculative uh, um, holdings in that indicated in that and QQQ same thing all right so let's jump over to um, total and you can see that the uh, 200 day is actually starting to descend down. Now, does that mean that that's going to happen with crypto as well? Well, it probably will definitely weigh down crypto. But it's also possible, and maybe I should say probable, from everything that I'm seeing in the news, that we'll, we will start to see a decoupling of um, crypto from the broader markets. And I think we're already starting to see just the front end of that um, now. It seems like crypto is kind of ahead of the game in terms of price action. And we see uh, you know, Bitcoin and the total market cap uh, kind of lead the way as to what the rest of the market is going to do. Um, nevertheless, we have to study the dollar, the VIX, and the indexes as well to kind of get a feel for what sentiment is going to spill over into our crypto space because that definitely, that bias will definitely factor in to, as a variable to our crypto markets. All right. Ethereum, um, you know, all these charts kind of look the same because they follow our lead dog. Bitcoin. All right. Bitcoin dominance is a little bit of a um, 
more of a surprise. Nah, I wouldn't say surprise because, you know, I did call over here in February. I said we're going to break to the top side of this descending triangle, come above our support, and this is the zone. This whole area right here is the zone that we will, uh, our price action will reside in for the next few months. And that did. The only thing that surprised me about this is I thought that maybe Bitcoin would test the top of our descending purple trend line here before coming down. And that part did not happen. All right. So now we are below on the 200, the 20, the 50 and the 100 on Bitcoin dominance. That should bode, bode well for the altcoin market. However, altcoins do follow as a general rule bitcoin now there's a few of course that are um, breaking ranks with bitcoin and doing their own thing and those are definitely the ones that you want to be invested in if you're going for the long run all right i of course am a trader a swing trader so we trade these we just look for the best setups for the next week to month and we um, buy those and then we sell when they're high and that's how we do it over at Studamas Trades. If you're interested, a link in the description except here on TradingView. You'll find that in my signature because I cannot post or even reference any links in the description here. All right, so back to Bitcoin. What I want to do here, guys, is I want to get rid of this support zone because I don't uh, anticipate that we will actually I think this is is not relevant anymore all right we broke below that and that whole area between 44 800 and 45 800 is definitely serious resistance now however um, uh, right now it's just you know adding confusion what I'm going to do here is I'm going to expand this green zone and kind of move it down if I can how do I do that? Oh, I, gotta, I guess I gotta pivot these guys here. So this is the area that I feel like we are going to be residing in over the course of the next several weeks slash months, all right? I don't think we're gonna just break up above that blue ascending trend line. It is getting closer and closer to the green trend line, which was a previous neckline for head and shoulders if you recall um, I went against the grain here 85% probability a head and shoulders would play out and I I, uh, I stated uh, that we would not follow the head and shoulders pattern and so far that has not happened now I still could definitely be wrong in that projection um, what I don't want to see here is I don't want to see us come below this 100 day and 50 day moving average and the 0.618 Fib retracement again. If that happens, that's bad news for us. Okay, that means we probably will come all the way back down and test this black ascending trend line once again. That's what I don't want to see because we've knocked against that many many times over the last several moons all right i mean if i count this out it's just one two three four five six seven eight candles nine candles 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 i mean that's just like you know taking a jackhammer to some some very strong cement and it's just cracking, cracking, cracking. If we come down here and try to test this black ascending trend line one more time, good chance we could break that. And I don't want to see that, definitely, and neither do you. Um, that means we will uh, proceed further down. Uh, but right now, it's looking like the bears are even just having a hard time breaking this level of $42,938. Um, and they're trying to get us down to touch this 50 day, 100 day, and they can't even do that. So that's, that's, that's a good sign for us. And this whole thing right here is very good. This right here uh, looks to me like we're forming a nice old bull flag here. And we proceed further up into this green zone. 
and eventually we'll come up and test our 200 day again this per, you know purple ascending trend line this support uh, resistance level up here at 48,900 all this stuff up in this area we got to get through that that's a lot of work the bulls have cut out for them but um, so it's going to take some time is what I'm saying it's going to take some time but this is kind of how I expect us to uh, reside for the next several weeks slash months and I'm hoping that this gives some of our altcoins a chance to catch up um, many of them are still down by the 50 and 100 day moving average and you can see Bitcoin has already touched their 200 day so many of our altcoins have not done that yet that's what I'm hoping for in the future for the altcoin space and that is primarily where I trade I like to trade volatility uh, after I've done significant tech analysis work on the charts all right so hopefully that helps you and that kind of gives you a clue as to what you're looking for uh, this weekend will be a true test um, we're let me jump to our outro we're uh, we're looking to um, break support the bears are at the level of 42,937 but it remains unclear whether they have the strength to do that or not to bring us down to that 50 100 day moving average as well as the 6.18 or 0.618 fib retracement level so um that's what we're looking to see this weekend uh at any rate um there's not much further mm -hmm. down and should we break below that i'll have to bring an update <laughs> but i expect us to remain inside of that oops that green uh zone there for the next week or two all right we will catch you all later in the next video until then peace y'all